Hello, I will be discussing about the drug biotransformation. The definition of drug is defined as the con conversion from one chemical form to another. The term is used synonymously with metabolism. As we all know, metabolism is a cycle of your um, digestive. So, why is drug formation necessary? So, renal excretion plays a pivotal role in terminating the biologic activity of some drugs, particularly those that have small molecular volumes or possess polar characteristics, such as functional groups that are fully ionized at physiologic pH. However, many drugs do not possess such psychochemical properties. So most drugs are excreted by the kidneys. For renal excretion drugs, they should have small molecular mass, be polar in nature, and not fully ionized at body pH. Most drugs are thus have to be broken down to simpler products. So the drugs are lipophilic in nature, which are strongly bound in plasma proteins. So when and how it, uh, does biotransformation occur? So, they occur between absorption and elimination from kidneys. Drugs administered orally can biotransform in the intestinal wall. So, biotransformation leads to, number one, pharmacological inactivation of drug, as you can see right here, like that. Active, it becomes inactive. Sal salicylic becomes saliciliuric. The second... Active, metabo active metabolite from an inactive drug. So, from an active drug, it becomes active, and from aspirin, it becomes salicylic acid. So, it has also no change in pharmacologic activity. So, active remains active, and codeine becomes morphine. So, um, here are the drug metabolizing organs. Liver is the heart of the metabolism. As you all know, the heart is a vital organ in our body. Therefore, the liver serves as the heart of the metabolism. Um, because of its relative richness of enzymes and the amount, because liver is a large organ, it has a lot of enzymes. So, schematic chart of metabolism or organ. So, liver, lungs, kidney, intestine, placenta, skin, testes, muscle, and spleen. So, there are two drug metabolizing enzymes, microsomal and then microsomal. So, in the microsomal, th those are the enzymes which are typically found in the endoplasmic reticulum of the hepatocytes. This one is found in the cytoplasm of the um, hepatocytes. So, microsomal enzymes, so these are found in the endoplasmic reticulum of the liver. So, other areas that has microsomal enzymes are kidney, lungs, and intestinal mucosa. So, for non-microsomal enzymes, they are found in the cytoplasm and mitochondria of hepatic cells. So, these also include other tissues including plasma. So, for the classification, metabolic pathways are classified according to the reaction involved. First is the phase 1 and the phase 2. So, Phase 1 reaction, oxidation, reduction, and hydrolysis. For the phase 2, it's only conjugation. So for the phase 1, it is characterized as a functional reaction, functionalization reaction, adding, a reveal, adding or revealing a functional group by oxidation, reduction, or hydrolysis. Hence, leading to increase in overall polarity of the drug which facilitates its, its excretion in urine. So this, that is the phase 1. So here, you can see in the picture, like that. So um, 450 cycle in drug oxidations are oxidized metabolite and E electron. There. P40, RH, and E. Okay. So for oxidation, it is the most common phase of reaction. So cytochrome P450 is a super family of oxidases that is responsible for the majority of oxidation reactions. So they are found mostly in very high concentrations in the liver. 
So it ha oxidation has alcohol dehydrogenase, which enrich an enzyme that oxidizes alcohol into al aldehydes from prim primary alcohol to ketones from secondary. As you can see right here, aldehyde, primary alcohol, primary alcohol because aldehyde. Yeah, there. Secondary becomes keto. So, um, next is the, an oxidation still, the aldehyde dehydrogenase. So, alde aldehydes can be oxidized from carboxylic acid by the enzyme aldehyde de dehydrogenase. There. Ethanol, acetaldehyde, and acetic acid. So, in the phase 1, the next is reduction. So, it, uh, common reductase enzymes include the common reaction in the reaction of disulfide bonds in which disulfides would be reduced to free sulfhydryl. There, disulf and free sulfhydryl. So, um, reduction also has aldoketoreductases. So, another reduction reaction is done by aldoketoreductases, which reduce carbonyl-containing compounds back to alcohol in a process opposite the oxidation done by the alcohol dehydrogenase. There, as you can see. So, next, so the last phase of um, fa uh, the last stage of phase one, rather, is hydrolysis. It is basically the addition of water across a bond, resulting in a more water soluble metabolite. So, an example for this is ester hydrolysis, in which is performed by the enzyme esterase found throughout the body. Here is ester esterase performed so that it will become ester hydroly it will be hydrolyzed. So, therefore, called ester hydrolysis. So, we will now move on to phase two. So, phase 2 reactions are commonly called conjugation reactions owing to the fact that they add to a functional group on the drug for the purpose of increase in its polarity. Conjugation process requires an enzyme generally called as transferase. There. So, um, since conjugation requires... The term, uh, enzyme general term as transferase. So what is transferase? So it is an enzyme that refers the large polar molecule called the cofactor into a drug. So in conjugation, there is glucro glucurodination. It is the most common phase uh, to reaction done by Gluconosyl transferase, this is the enzyme that uses UDPGA as cofactor to transfer glucuronic acid to several functional groups. Here, as you can see, this, this one transfers, therefore it will become like this. So, glutathione S transferase is the enzyme responsible for reaction of glutathione with electrophiles like epoxides and halide, halides. This one. So, um, there is also glutathione conjugation as I stated here. So, um, the reaction results from addition of glutathione molecules to an electrophilic substrate like halid halides and epoxides. So, it generally acts to detoxify the electrophiles. There, as you can see. So, the diet and environmental factors of biotransformation biotrans is that they contribute to individual variations of drug metabolism. Charcoal broiled foods and cruciferous vegetables are known to induce CYP1A enzymes, whereas grapefruit juice is known to inhibit the CYP3A metabolism of co-administered drug substrates. So, induce is to... Put in, inhibit is to stop. So, cigarette smokers metabolize some drugs more rapidly than non-smokers because of enzyme induction. Industrial workers exposed to some pesticides metabolize certain drugs more rapidly than unexposed individuals. Such differences make it difficult to determine effective and safe doses of drugs that have narrow therapeutic indices, induces. So, age and sex also um, 
is a factor in drug biotransformation. So, increased susceptibility to the pharmacologic or toxic activity of drugs has been reported in very young and very old patients compared with young adults. So, although this may reflect differences in absorption, distribution, and elimination, differences in drug metabolism also play a role. Slower metabolism could be due to reduced activity of metabolic enzymes or reduced availability of essential endogenous cofactors. Sex-dependent variations in drug metabolism have been well documented in rats but not in rodents. Oops. Oops, sorry. Sorry for that interruption. So, interactions between drugs and endogenous compounds. Some drugs require conjugation with endogenous substrates such as GSH or glucuronic acid or sulfate for their inactivation. Consequently, different drugs may compete for the same endogenous substrates, and the faster reacting drug may effectively deplete endogenous substrate levels and impair the metabolism of the slower reaction reacting drug. So if the latter has a step, steep dose response curve or a narrow margin of safety, potenti- potentiation of its therapeutic and toxic effects may result. So we have discussed the dose response curve. So it if it has a deep dose response curve, the poten- potentiation of its therapeutic and toxic effects may be seen. So disease affecting drug metabolism, acute or chronic disease that affect liver architecture or function markedly affect hepatic metabolism of some drugs. Such conditions include alcoholic hepatitis, active or inactive alcoholic cirrhosis, hemochromitis, chronic active hepatitis, biliary cirrhosis, and acute viral or drug-induced hepatitis. For example, half-lives of chlorodia exposized and diazepam in patients with liver cirrhosis or acute viral hepatitis are greatly increased. With a corresponding increase in their effects, consequently, these drugs may cause coma in patients with liver disease when given in an ordinary dose. That will be all. Thank you for listening.